Hello everyone, welcome back to Shipwreck Cove. My name is Yuri, and today I'm going to be talking about some of the announcements we've seen uh, come out of BlizzCon uh, in the last day or so. Um, the opening announcement was yesterday afternoon, and they had a lot of uh, kind of cool announcements they made around all their different franchises. Um, so I'm going to kind of do a quick overview of some of those, and then probably talk more in depth about uh, the changes coming to World of Warcraft. So yesterday at the opening ceremony, um, some of the big announcements that came out was Overwatch, they are adding a, a new hero called Sombra. There's been a lot of speculation on the internet, a lot of different um, kind of puzzles and stuff people have been trying to solve to figure out details about Sombra. And then finally yesterday, um, during the ceremony, they released the trailer announcing her. Um, she's got some different abilities. It looks like she can kind of hack and take on other players' abilities. She's got a way to kind of teleport around um, and has some stealth uh, uh, capabilities. So she should be an interesting hero to play and... Uh, should change up Overwatch. Um, she's supposed to be coming to the PTR sometime this upcoming week, so that'll be neat. Um, another big announcement is around esports for Overwatch. They're going to be taking it a lot more seriously and because this game is still so new. They're taking a different approach to building out esports around it. They're treating it more like a um, an actual like the NFL or the NBA. Um, they're building something called the Overwatch League, and as part of that is they're going to have. You know, similar to what we see with the NFL is a combine for to determine, you know, players and, and team owners. And uh, they want to have teams in major cities and kind of do events around that to kind of help build this this esports um, into something bigger than it is now and kind of try to bring more people into that. So it's a really interesting concept. And, and you know, part of that is it kind of guarantees benefits to the players to kickbacks to like some of the team owners so it, it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out and i hope it works out well for blizzard because it'd be really cool to finally see um, some of the gaming and the esports being taken more seriously um next was uh diablo had some big announcements um mainly around the anniversary that's coming up here in december part of that is they redid diablo 1 in the diablo 3 game um they added like a grainy pixelated graphics filter uh, reused a lot of the old sounds and uh, you'll be playing as the new current classes but you'll be fighting you know through old tristram down into the cathedral uh the 16 level dungeon and finally you know fighting the old original diablo um, so that'll be really cool nostalgia factor for a lot of people that didn't ever get to experience diablo when it first came out it'll be a, an opportunity to be able to see that and see you know what started you know that franchise 20 years ago um so that'll be coming out soon in december they also announced um, that they're adding the Necromancer class finally to um, Diablo 3. Uh, that'll be coming out sometime next year. It's kind of a paid mini DLC pack of some sort. Um, it just, that was one of the more popular classes in Diablo 2. I know it was one of my favorites uh, next to the uh, the old Sorcerer. So I'm really looking forward to, to that coming out. Hearthstone will be getting a new expansion coming up in December called the Mean Streets of Gadget Zan which is based around like Gadget Zan becoming this port town and becoming a much bigger city than it is that we see in World of Warcraft because uh, after the Cataclysm, the ocean came up to the edge of it. So, you know, the whole concept of this expansion is Gadget Zan exploded, became this massive city of commerce and trade, and the whole expansion for Hearthstone revolves around um, what that did to the city, um, you know, with the, the CD side of things. You've got three crime families that'll be uh, available as kind of different... Uh, uh, cards in this one uh, there'll be like the cabal um, there'll be some enforcer ones and what these do is they've got different leaders and different uh, legendary cards around them and then there's also this new thing called tri uh, class cards in each uh, different um, faction is tuned to three different um, classes so like the cabal has mage warlocks and priest these tri class cards have the ability to be used in all three of those types of decks and they may like one of the examples i showed was when it's played um and you meet a certain criteria you can p possibly get if you're a priest you might get a warlock card or a mage pyroblast or something so it's very interesting to how see how that kind of affects over uh the hearthstone gameplay i don't play a lot of the hearthstone i'm just not real good at those type of card games but i know a lot of people out there really enjoy it and i'm excited to give it a try it should uh Brings an interesting flavor to uh, Hearthstone and some of the decks that we see out there now. For Heroes of the Storm, which is the, the team brawler that kind of pulls heroes in from all the different universes, they announced that they're going to be adding two new heroes here soon. The first being uh, King Varian Wren from uh, World of Warcraft. As you know, he's dead in that, but the whole concept of this is uh, he's going to be in the, in the Nexus fighting. Uh, he's kind of the first dual class... Um, 
character in Heroes, he's going to be both a warrior and an assassin, depending upon what talents you pick. They said there's, you know, like six different choices that kind of affect that to allow you to play him differently than uh, most other classes. The second new hero, which is really kind of cool, is Ragnaros, uh, the original kind of in-game boss from WoW. Um, he kind of acts as a raid boss in the Heroes of the Storm match. Um, some of the stuff I saw is he's able to take over control of one of the, the castles along the lanes um, so he can like turn into this giant massive raid boss, uh, you know, throwing out different spells, wiping out the enemy team. So that'll be really interesting to see him play with. Um, it should uh, be really cool to come out. They're also adding some additional maps, um, some more of the asymmetrical type where they're one lane, one team's defending, the other is uh, attacking, uh, one is for Blackheart's Revenge, where you know one team is defending their town keep uh, core, and the other team's pushing along with the, the Ghost Pirate Blackheart to take them out, so that'll be kind of cool as well. For StarCraft II, they had kind of two announcements. One is they're going to be adding uh, Alexei Stukov as the next commander in their commander co-op mission packs that they've been coming out with, so that'll be coming out soon. The second was a big kind of interesting one was they're partnering with uh, the company uh, DeepMind, which is uh, the company behind Google's AI that recently uh, beat the world's best uh, Go player. And what they're doing is Blizzard is going to be opening up StarCraft II's API to allow uh, DeepMind to have their AI learn from uh, real-time strategy and try to learn you know, how to counter um, play style in that and humans and so it'll be really interesting to see what that does for an ai it's a little bit different than just a strategy game like go where they're you know they're set strategies in starcraft you know there's chaos there's constantly you know it's got to adapt on the fly and everything so it'd be really interesting to see how that goes um you know it could really advance ai and how that works um you know there could be a a lot of advances that come from that just for science and other things in addition to impacting you know the gaming industry this could you know give us more enhanced AIs where it's not really like playing easy medium hard you know if it can adapt to you as you're playing that would be really amazing and cool um, a little terrifying you know you kind of get in the Skynet territory but it should be a really neat concept and I'm excited to see where where Blizzard takes that and where that partnership grows um it was a very kind of different announcement, but I think that's really cool. It kind of really melds the current science that's going on, AI and everything, um, pushes that forward. So, And now finally, the big kind of information that mostly impacts, you know, my favorite Blizzard game, you know, the Warcraft universe, World of Warcraft. Um, there were several announcements that came out yesterday, kind of the opening ceremony one. There wasn't a whole lot other than, you know, Legion is doing phenomenal for them. Um the big, kind of the first small thing was uh, they're continuing their annual tradition of having a pet come out that where they donate proceeds uh, to Make-A-Wish. This year's is going to be a, a fell kitten, so that'll be really neat, uh, kind of a cute pet to go along with their, you know, the center kitten and some of the ones from years past. Uh, they also talked about kind of the future um, of WoW and the different patches that we'll be seeing coming out soon. Um, they talked about how 7.1 they consider a medium patch, and then they've got a small patch that'll be hitting the, the test run this upcoming week um, called 7.1.5. It's going to add um, with some small features and do some class overhaul and tuning for certain things. Uh, some of the features they're going to add is Pandaren, uh, Mist of Pandaria Time Walking Dungeons will be finally coming out. There'll be six different dungeons included in that, so we start seeing that. Um, they said they're not going to do Warlord yet. They're going to try to always do uh, you know the expansion prior, uh, like two expansions prior to the current one uh, for Time Walking. Um, they're also bringing back the Brawlers Guild with some a lot of new bosses. They're adding something called a, a Rumble where everybody that's queued up waiting to be able to participate in the Brawlers Guild will get pulled in and do this raid boss that gives everybody rewards. Uh, so that'll be kind of different instead of just sitting there AFK waiting for your queue to pop. Um, they're also adding you know some new mounts, uh, some currency that allows you to purchase things like a graveyard that everybody can use that's actually inside the Gil Brawlers Guild instead of respawning you know somewhere out in the city and having to run all the way back. Um, they're also adding in this patch some mini holidays that'll last one or two days. There won't be any like big rewards like pets, mounts, or toys involved, but they'll just be kind of cool little things to help bring some life to to the world. Um, the first one's going to be in January on the 22nd as a uh, Anchorage Remembrance Day. So there'll be some stuff that happens that talks about you know the opening of the gates of AQ, which was a big deal back in Vanilla WoW, um, actually caused you know server crashes and some other things. But so it'll be kind of remembrance of. The in-game results that, you know, the wars around that and everything. Um, and, you know, going in and defeating the Karaji. Uh, they're going to do some stuff like Volunteer Guard Day, where you get to volunteer as a guard in a city. And there will be hostile NPCs that attack that you got to deal with and other things. 
Um, and then they talked about this spring break one called Boat Day. So there's a lot of different things to help breathe life into the world. And, you know, so there's always something kind of going on, um, you know, that's not necessarily max level, you know, in-game content. Um, in that patch, they're also updating the Blades Edge Arena with updated graphics, a new voice announcer. Um, it should it should look a lot better than the kind of dated uh, hexagonal polygon looking, you know, arena that we have today. So with 7.1.5, so there's going to be some class tuning as well, um, some changes such as hunters are getting traps back instead of just survival having it. Um, they're kind of looking at the different talents and seeing if any should just be rolled up into the base class abilities, trying to keep, you know, those talent choices as more of a choice and not a requirement. You know, you have to take this in order to do X DPS, etc. Um, they also talked about uh, artifact knowledge catch-up taking place um, in this patch, they're going to let you buy up to rank 10, so that way you, you know, your alts or if you're a new player, you can get caught up a lot quicker on artifact knowledge and power, so you're not, you know, left behind there. And then the big news that kind of came out of BlizzCon is what's coming next for big, massive patch. Um, with 7.2, um, it's going to return us back to the Broken Shore. Um, we're going to be setting up a base similar to like what we did on the Isle of Queldonis uh, from Burning Crusade. Um, what this patch is going to do is, you know, we're going to kind of set up build-up forces, and then we're going to be going into the Tomb of Sargeras. Um, there's basically two levels to it, an upper and a lower. The uh, upper, we're going to get a four-boss dungeon that allows us to, you know, continue some story there. We're going to be using the Aegis of Agrimar to go in there and open up uh, that area and fight these bosses. Then we're also going to be going down into the catacombs of the tomb um, for a nine-boss raid where we will eventually fight you know, the, the avatar of Sargeras finally um, will also be fighting uh, Kill Jaden himself. I mean, we're, what we're basically going to be doing is trying to push the Legion back off of Azeroth, buy us a brief reprieve, because, you know, with demons, if you kill them, you know, in the world, they'll just go back to the Twisting Nether and come back. So, you know, we have that goal of, you know, let's get them off our planet and then we'll figure out what to do. Um, also, as part of 7.2, we're going to be getting to see some more Legion invasions like we did in the uh, pre-expansion event, except instead of being out in the world, they're going to be focused on the Broken Isles. So you might see them show up in Valshara or Stormheim or Azuna or High Mountain. And, you know, the, basically there will be no world quest when those are going on. You'll have to kind of go in, fight. You'll get credit for Emissary as you do objectives in these. And you'll be pushing the Legion out of the zone. Um then you'll go up, there'll be a scenario where you go up in the spaceship and fight the Legion in that to push them out and to end the invasion. Um, you know, they're also going to be continuing our Class Order Hall campaign, so there'll be new story around that. Um, there are going to be new artifact uh, power uh, traits that we're going to have, so they're going to add some additional you know, gold tiers, and I think they're going to add some other new traits and add levels to additional traits. Um, with that, they're also going to increase the olive artifact knowledge cap from 25 on up some more um, in order to help with that progression. Um, they're also going to be adding in the Legion Pathfinder uh, uh, 2 achievement, which basically, if you've got the first part, you'll finish this, which will all be open world content. It'll open up flying across all the Broken Isles for you and all of your alts across your account. So what's really cool is, you know, we'll finally be able to fly. You don't have to worry about trying to, how do, how do I get around this zone that, you know, there's a cliff here, but I need to get up here. And I got to go way, way, way off to the side and around. So that'll be nice. Um, we're also going to be getting class specific mounts, which are really cool. So for the new class mounts, monks are going to be getting a uh, tiger that uh, has some cool ornamental looks to it. It's kind of orange and green. Warlocks are going to be getting a fell armored uh, dread steed. Hunters are getting a, uh, like an owl wolf that's got kind of some feathers and fur. Um, Mages will be getting a flying uh, disc, kind of like you see in the um, Malagos raid. Warriors are getting a red, uh, like, proto-proto-drake. Paladins are kind of getting an updated paladin charger with armor. Um, priests are getting this giant griffin owl that's uh, pretty cool looking. It's got golden wings. Rogues are getting a uh, raven. Shamans are getting an air elemental they get to ride around. That is really freaking cool. Druids are getting an updated flight form, it looks like. That's a uh, giant owl. And demon hunters are getting one of the red fell bats. And then finally, death knights are getting their um, kind of a fell uh, bone dragon, kind of like, you know, Sindrigosa with a green core. That looks really neat.
that'll all be lock unlockable throughout Order Hall campaign. There'll be some new artifact appearances that are supposed to come from, you know, mastering that particular spec that look really cool. You know, they had a, a druid werebear form, which is really, really cool looking. Um, warriors are going to get this uh, flail weapon that actually has physics to it, so you'll see the, the ball on the chain just, you know, flying around everywhere. It'll be kind of neat. Um, they're also adding some new, like, the weekly brawls that we see in, in Overwatch or even kind of, you know, Heroes of the Storm or Hearthstone to effect where different, you know, brawls each week that have different rules and stuff. Uh, two PvP. Kind of some of the ones I showed off was a Rathy Basin with this snow just falling, so it's all whited out and snow on the ground and everything that looks really cool. They're going to add stuff like gravity laps to I have a, I have a storm which you know you shoot you up in the air and you fight in the air and land and that kind of thing, so that'll be really cool kind of flavor to PVP kind of get some and it'll it'll get me back into PVP some just to see some different flavor there, and then you know I expect we'll probably see seven point two sometime you know probably late spring next year maybe early summer, um, you know because Nighthold hasn't even you know come out yet it's supposed to come out after the first of the year so I say we get you know we get a good couple months of that and then we'll get. Uh, 7.2 which adds you know a ton more content so that'll be really exciting and then you know blizzard even said okay well if we push the legion back you know that's the end of the expansion right no um what their plans are is after 7.2 um we'll eventually be going to argus the home world of the former home world of the eridar slash Trenai, that is now the home world of the legion so we'll be finally you know leaving azeroth and we're going to be going to take the fight to the Legion so that we should finally see some of the heroes like Trillian and Alaria some more to where we're, you know, fighting to finally just end the Legion and end that threat, which is really cool and makes you wonder what, you know, what's that going to lead into for the future of World of Warcraft with the big bad kind of gone. You know, we'll see a lot probably with the old god still, Inzoth, the old god that we've heard a lot about. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes um, and where they take us in World of Warcraft. But yeah, so... I'm really excited about the future of what Blizzard is kind of talked about yesterday at BlizzCon. Um, we'll see what they, they talk about today. Um, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, leave comments below about anything, um, and have a great day. Bye.